Well, hello, good evening to you. Welcome. This is Ghana Tonight. We are live on news up here at Tadesawe Kanda. Also live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. I am out for the concert. Tonight, bombshell as a former Northern Regional Chair of the New Patriotic Party, Bugri Nabu, validates the content of a leaked tape regarding an alleged plot to oust the Inspector General of Police, Dr. George Kufu Dampari. What more is there for the committee probing the matter to do? We find out from a member of the committee who joins us later tonight. Stay with us. Also, the men have been separated from the boys in the just ended New Petroti Party Superdelegates Conference. But that wasn't without a few incidents causing the party to haul before the disciplinary committee some individuals, including flag bearer hopeful Kennedy of Japan. There are some matters arising in there. Stay with us. We're getting to it. Also, here on Ghana Tonight, police in the northern region have arrested 13 persons and six have sustained various degrees of injury and gunshot wounds following an alleged attack on the Tamale District Court. We have the inside story of what happened earlier today. So always, let's hear from you. Very, very interactive here on Ghana Tonight. One of the things we're going to be doing tonight as well is an exclusive interview with Francis Adainimo, one of the two persons who polled nine votes at the end of that superdelegates conference over the weekend. Reason why the party would have to go back next Saturday if they don't reach any agreement between him and the other who had nine votes. Francis Adainimo is going to be joining us on Ghana tonight. Stay with us. Let's settle for Ghana Briefs. Former Northern Regional Chairman of the NPP, Bugre Nabu, has validated the content of a leaked audio regarding an alleged plot to host the IGP, Dr. George Ekufu Dampari. The audio tape is the subject of an ongoing bipartisan parliamentary probe. Since I cannot keep everything they were talking to me at that, uh, at that point, it was very, very good to record them so that I know the president, if I tell him something, he will follow up with the truth. Next time, he will not give me respect. So the best thing was to ensure that when I tell him, he asked me, are you sure? I said, well, this is the tape. Penedie Japan's campaign team has served notice to file a formal petition with the NPP regarding reported attacks on party agents during Saturday's Special Delegates Conference. Campaign manager and former head of the Ghana Maritime Authority, Kwame Owusu, who made this known at a news conference in Accra, further indicated that their candidate is ready to appear before the party's disciplinary committee. Petition. It is part of the process for which the invitation has been made. So you get the opportunity to tell your side of the story or what prompted you to do what you did. So of course we will do that. A political scientist, Professor Ransport Jampo, has questioned the new patriotic party over its approach in dealing with persons who allegedly breached the party regulations. According to him, the party must tread cautiously in handling disciplinary matters, adding that any unfair treatment could ruin its chances ahead of the 2024 elections. Pulling, dragging somebody before a disciplinary committee is not tantamount to the person being guilty. I do not see how telling somebody that I'm going to give you a showdown amounts to burning a party. I, I don't, in my mind, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see how it amounts to anything. The party must be seen to be fair in handling some of these things. Two babies have been abandoned at the Kolibu Teaching Hospital by unknown parents. Health workers at the facility say the babies will soon be handed over to the social welfare department.
The Northern Regional Police Command has arrested 13 people for allegedly attacking the Tamale District Court 1. Some angry residents stormed the court to witness a case involving a businessman, Karim Usman, who is alleged to be dealing in illicit drugs. A confrontation ensued between the police and a cross-section of the youth who tried to force their way into the court. Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. That's a worrying development, uh, which the Ghana Police Service has issued a statement on uh, earlier today. The police indicated they've arrested one person in connection with the killing of a 28-year-old man at a YM in the Western region. There's a video that went viral um, that captured a number of persons, including this 28-year-old, who has died, unfortunately, just shooting at each other. Now, the arrest took place on August 25, 2023. Now, preliminary investigation indicates that the suspect, one, Emmanuel Kweko, together with five other accomplices currently on the run, was in the process of exhibiting the potency of their alleged spiritual powers. In the viral video, the suspects claim the powers were expected to protect them from bullets and knife wounds and, and attacks. In fact, during the process, the suspect, Wani Mano Kweko, uh, shot and killed the deceased, Amu Kojo, alias Malam, with a single barrel gun loaded with an AA cartridge. We're going to show you portions of that video later as, as we go on here on Ghana tonight. But the, the worrying concern, especially with the police service and the criminologists, is that this is not the first time that this has happened. We've seen a trend of, of th these in incidents. Take a look. I'll just quickly recall some precedents to this, right? Now, take a look at this. In November 2022, a man was supported to have shot himself in an attempt to test juju fortification at Dangera Ag Aguna Port. Fast forward to March 2023, same incident. Three men shot each other to test their juju fortification and they were arrested by the police. Now, and now this particular incident that's happened and today. Now, take a look at this. Th this is the video that, that we're talking about and, and what the police uh, have indicated. This one led to the death of this gentleman in, in question. Take a look. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Well, we are unable to show that violent aspect of it um, for the reason of you, our viewers, and to extreme caution there. So the police have indicated that these are the five. The five persons you saw on, on, on that video are on the run, and they are on a manhunt for them. This is something we're keeping tabs on because of the precedents I just showed you. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the former Northern Regional Chair of the New Patriotic Party, Namong Da Bugri Nabu, has vindicated the content of the leaked audio regarding an alleged plot to oust the IGP, Dr. George Kufudampari. Earlier today, he validated the content of this leaked audio. The audio tape is the subject of an ongoing bipartisan parliamentary probe. A 
very interesting developments um, in, in the earlier today. Uh, my colleague Duke Mensah Poko sat through the committee's hearing earlier today, pieced through together what this committee's hearings did comprised of today, plus Bugri Nabu's admissions of the content of this leaked tape. Take a look. Chief Bugri Nabu appeared before the committee in the company of two lawyers. Proceedings started with a playback of the contents of the audio. Chairman of the committee, Samuel Atachia, then questioned Chief Bugri Nabu. He admitted that indeed his voice featured on the tape. My voice is there. Very good. Very good. Okay. Would you be good enough to tell us the rest of the individuals that you were engaged in that conversation with? Well, uh, one commander, Asari. Okay, please go slowly, yes. Police commander. Yes. But I don't know which district or which region or which section he command. There was one man also later joined called Commander uh, C.O.P. Mensa. Okay. That he's on leave now after his retirement. Yeah, he was a part of it. Yes. Mm. So you were only three? Then later, when the meeting were going on, one, I didn't see the person, it was on phone. One, uh, JP, 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 who is also a, a police superintendent mm -hmm. at the police headquarters. But I haven't seen him. He, he was he talked to me on phone, and uh, I listened to him on phone. He told the committee that the commissioner of police in question had contacted him to lobby the president to dismiss the current IGP and make him the IGP. This one day is very difficult, but even what I was even detect when somebody is on retirement, how do you want to come back and be IGP? He admitted to tasking his assigns to carry out the recording to serve as proof in the event of the meeting with the president regarding the issue. Since I cannot keep everything they were talking to me at that, uh, at that point, it was very, very good to record them so that I know the president, if I tell him something, he will follow up with the truth. Next time, you will not give me respect. You know him, and I know him. So the best thing was to ensure that when I tell him, he asked me, are you sure? I said, well, this is the tape. I don't want to miss it. Did you, you listen to it. Chairman of the committee later told the media that three more persons would appear before the committee at the next sitting. For now, I think three individuals will have to show up on Thursday. So that's a touch out there. Stay with me. We'll have a member of the, this committee, this seven-member committee set up by the Speaker of Parliament to investigate this leaked audio, joining us shortly. But for the uninitiated, sh quite shocking. Uh, this is just a portion of the details of this leaked audio we're talking about. He's not a lawyer. He has no fair idea of the law. He has never been on the felt. It was NDC that was promoting him day in, day out. When Massa was assistant superintendent of police, he was a sergeant. He was what? Sergeant. Sergeant. I told that <laughs> Then MPP, brought, NDC brought you this far. Now, what is bragging about is the fact that he will be agitated in 1930, 2030, because your mama has promised him if he should win, may God forbid anything, if he should win, he will maintain him as a leader. And he again, and he Who was there to hear this? Oh, it is true. Wait, a meeting was held, huh? mm. of which he was a party to that meeting. Huh? And where he was in this NDC meeting, NDC meeting headed by your mom. So this is the leaked audio 
with these persons. Now we know the, their names. Bugri Nabo mentioned their names. So these are the voices, apart from him, who he confirms that he's on the tape. One Commander Sari and then COP Mensa are the names that he mentions are the other two voices on this leaked audio, which he has confirmed that it's indeed true and authentic. Peter Tobo is a member of parliament for the Wild West constituency. He is also a former police chief. So he understands the workings of the Ghana Police Service. He's joining us on the telephone. He's also a member of this particular committee set up to investigate the details of this audio. Thank you so much, Honorable Tobo, for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Now, Bugri Nabo's admissions confirming that this tape is authentic has made the work of the committee really easy for you, is it not? Hello? Hello, Mr. Tobi, if you can hear me, I'm saying that earlier today, with the admissions by Bugri Nabo, that indeed the, the details of this leaked audio is true, captures his voice, gives you names of these two other persons. It's made the work of the committee quite easy, is it not? Thank you very much. Let me say good evening to our cherished listeners. In fact, when we had Bugri Nabo, now, Bugru Nabu, or Chief Bugru Nabu, in our presence today as the prime witness in this matter that we are inquiring into. All of us were hoping that the matter would not be complicated with a denial from him. Mm. Lucky enough, he listened to the audio, and after that, straight to the point, he authenticated the audio, saying that it was his voice, and everything that was said in there was actually what he himself recorded. So we're very happy that at least it has simplified the whole inquiry process for us. I see, because that was the, from the terms of reference, which we're going to show our viewers shortly, that was your first task to authenticate the, the, this audio, whether it's indeed true or otherwise. That's been done. But the other names that he mentions, the COP, Mensa, and Commander Sari, how is the committee going to treat this, this revelation? Committee is a bipartisan committee established by parliament with an expert advisor. And I think that as a committee with the status of a high court, we are very democratic in our approach and we respect the rules of engagement. So basically every client or every every witness will have the right to a counsel of his choice. And what we've done to Mr. Bull Nabu will not be different from what we'll be doing to the other witnesses when they appear. It's an open forum. You listen to the tape, you make your comments. We ask you questions, you answer them to the best of your knowledge. And at the end of the day, when we are done, we analyze, draw our conclusions, and write a report, submit to, public, to Parliament. So, please tell us it. I see. So, what's, what's the end game for the committee? I mean, you have the powers of a high court. So are you going to be recommending punitive measures? And in what form will these punitive measures come after your work? Once again, this is a parliamentary committee acting on the referral given to us by the Speaker of Parliament to authenticate the tape, look at the security implications of the tape, who are those involved, what was the real agenda, what recommendations and ensure that we don't experience such a thing in our security environment again. So these are all the matters that we are going to conclude on. And when we submit a report to Parliament, as has always been the case, it will be late, it will be brought to plenary, and it will be debated. At the end of the day, conclusions will be drawn, and a statement from the Speaker, representing the Parliament, will be issued for that matter. But I think that this is a matter of public knowledge. So let's all continue to follow. I think that we'll get the process through and we'll appreciate the end of it all. But if you listen to the, the details of the, of the tape, in fact, you as a committee got the benefit of listening to the over 30 minutes long audio today, beyond the five, 10 minutes that went viral earlier. So some of the things you talked about that George Kofu Dampari has not been on the field, he's not a lawyer, NDC has been promoting him, and so on and so forth, it mentions other persons' names. Even the first deputy speaker's name popped up somewhere. So these are serious issues, I mean, for you who have served in the Ghana Police Service and as a member of this committee, is it not? Very serious ones. 
to the, to the, to the fact that somebody is sitting thinking that it doesn't matter what the people of Ghana want, that the police, very particularly the Inspector General of Police's office, can be used to shut in Ghanaians, can be used to ensure that somebody would have to win election through my enemies, not just the free will of the people. And if that happens to be the case, in fact, this is more than a coup d'etat. Because what we are doing, that people are going to vote, and it is not the vote that will be counted that will determine who becomes president, it is the mafia underground that will determine who becomes president. And if it is not more dirty than coup d'etat, I don't know what it means. But you know, let's continue to unravel the mystery surrounding the whole thing. At the end of the day, we will draw conclusions and we will see what we can do as a committee to make recommendations that are far reaching to ensure that such a thing do not repeat itself in a very fragile and young democracy. But you see, the, the, and, and this is going to be my final question to you, the, the benefit that you bring to this committee, uh, Honorable Tobo, is that you have served at the top hierarchy of the, of the Ghana Police Service. You know the workings at the top of this police service we we're talking about. And you're a member of parliament now and a member of, of this committee as well that we're talking about. How should the incident, beyond investigating its authenticity and then also your recommendations, influence the mode of appointment of IGPs, which has always been the question, so that in this instance, no other police officer would think that, look, I'm going to influence someone who is close to the president so that the president who appointed the IGP can remove an IGP who is not doing, quote-unquote, the bidding of the party in power? Uh, let's not jump the gun because recommendations are drawn from conclusions, and these conclusions are arise at day from the facts that we analyze. So as we continue to gather the facts, we have not concluded yet. Let's not jump the gun. Let's allow the committee to work to its logical conclusion, and the, the report will be a matter of public knowledge. The speaker is looking at any other recommendation that we think that is necessary to sanitize our security system in this country and to enhance our democratic credentials as, as, as a democratic nation. So we are very open to those ideas, but we can't just jump the gun, as I said. Let's allow the facts to speak and we'll draw conclusions. And at the end of the day, we'll make the necessary recommendations. Well, I want to thank you very much for your time. Appreciate you tonight. Um, he's a member of parliament for the Wild West constituency, Peter Tobo, a former police chief and a member of this seven member committee set up by the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Suman, Kinsford Bagman, right honorable. But Samuel Atachian, who is the chair of this committee, uh, also indicated that they on Thursday would be expecting these three persons whose names were mentioned by Bugri Nabo to appear. Take a look. You heard him. I don't have to pass any judgment on it because I've not heard and we've all not heard the full extent of the uh, evidence. It is very important that at this point in time we hold our horses and to have the full complement of the evidence and then we see what to do. But what is very significant is that we wanted him to authenticate uh, the, 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 uh, the audio, which he did. And he said, he even named those who were on the I mean, audio, and that is sufficient. Thursday, those who have been named on the audio will have to come before the committee for us to also um, interrogate them and adduce evidence. He's released for now, unless there are residual matters that he has to come back and answer. But so far, we've released him to go. I don't have to judge the issues now, as I keep saying. Because at the end of the day, you need to listen to everybody. And then, and then we'll be able to understand the full complement of the evidence. We are supposed to, uh, I mean, adduce the evidence, come out with what we call the findings of fact. And then we also have value judgments as well. Whether, whether a witness was lying and looking at his demeanor and his tendencies, and whether even what he said is not an absurdity. There. But earlier today, I, I was with the IGP, uh, both attended the program that the 95th birthday of the founder of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, as UPSA, Nana Dr. Ampoma. Now, in, in the mind of the IGP, earlier today when he, he delivered the speech at this 
venue, the 95th birthday celebrations of the UPSC founder. He said, quote, this is a speech that he delivered. My commitment is to improve on the impact of the Ghana Police Service so that the service will continue to grow beyond me as IGP. That is what good leadership is about, unquote. And sit there, stay with us. We'll be back shortly after this quick break. But coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the police in the northern region have arrested 13 persons and six have sustained various degrees of gunshot um, injuries following an alleged attack on the Tamale District Court. Let's do this briefly because this has generated some concern uh, there in, in that part of the country. Uh, this alleged attack on the Tamale District Court, a number of persons have been arrested. But my colleague, Christopher Mwakom, who's been following this particular incident quite closely, is joining me on Zoom. Chris, what's the situation now uh, in, in that area? Yes, yeah, so Alfred, the uh, situation has come to uh, normal because um, earlier intervention by uh, some stakeholders like traditional authorities uh, to calm the youth down and allow uh, the police to do their work has uh, brought about some uh, calm in the Tamale metropolis. But earlier, uh, the e incident actually um, triggered some form of confusion, not only at the court premises, but also in the greater Tamale metropolis. I understand that uh, some three persons have sustained gunshot wounds. Um, in fact, six persons, number has been updated to six, correct? Those who have sustained gunshot wounds in the area as a result of this incident? Yes, Alfred, correct. Because um, when the police were firing uh, the warning shot, some mm -hmm. uh, of the residents who were running for uh, their lives allegedly were hit by uh, some straight bullets and had to be rushed to the Tamale Teaching Hospital. So as we speak now, uh, the number of uh, injured persons is uh, six. I see. Now, and, and talk about the uh, victims. What's happening to them now? Yes, yeah, so they were rushed to the Tamale uh, Teaching Hospital. Uh, medical officials at the hospital uh, earlier yeah. uh, around 6 p.m. told me that uh, the uh, victims are responding well to uh, treatment. They are hoping that even some of them will be discharged tomorrow. Uh, that is those who sustained some minor uh, injuries, but uh, those who had uh, uh, some level of serious injuries uh, will have to even undergo surgery. And we understand that early on, a woman who also sustained injuries in the leg um, as well. Yes, Can you Yes, Alfred, the injuries, uh, we understand that, uh, in fact, the first number that we got was um, uh, four, and later we were told that some two other persons were rushed to the hospital. When we got to the uh, Tamale Teaching Hospital, actually, um, we were not uh, given the permission to see the victims because uh, we were told that it's a matter of security and that uh, the media was not allowed to have access. So we could not get closer to uh, the victims. But we are told by our um, sources at the Tamale Teaching Hospital that uh, the number is now six. And uh, like I indicated earlier, uh, some yeah. of them who sustained minor injuries will be likely discharged tomorrow. I see. But just give me a brief um, idea of exactly what triggered this particular incident okay so um in january this year uh, owing to the fact that the uh increasing rate of uh drug abuse is uh taking over amongst the youth in uh, the greater tamale metropolis mm. a group of young men in the abuabu community organized themselves uh, to form an anti uh, drugs uh, committee or watchdog committee and they had to write letters to 16 paramount chiefs within the uh, Dagbon enclave and also uh, the king and overlord of Dagbon, Diana Abukari II, uh, seeking their permission to, uh, uh, as it were, uh, trap all the drug peddlers or persons who trade in drugs in the uh, metropolis. They also copied the Ghana Police Service and the Food and Drugs Authority. So they have been operating within that period. And uh, initially, when they intercept these drugs, they, they hand the suspects right. and the drugs right. over to the 
uh, okay. police. Unfortunately, uh, according to them, they had some issues with the police. So uh, there was some uh, trust loss along the line. And for that matter, they had to now operate on their own. So when they intercept, uh, they bend. They take to the chief's palace yeah. and they destroy them. So um, just um, last month, they intercepted uh, some uh, boxes of tramadol uh, from this uh, suspect, Karim uh, Osman, and handed him over to uh, the police. Now, because the youth have lost trust in the police, now, on the 15th of this month, the uh, suspects, uh, together with other uh, youth, were uh, at the Tamale uh, uh, District Court, where uh, the case was supposed to be heard. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the youth uh, stormed the court premises. So uh, today, the, 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 the uh, uh, presiding magistrate had to adjourn sitting to today. And uh, so the youth, knowing very well that today, uh, there could be a possible judgment, stormed the court premises in their numbers. So unfortunately, when they got there, uh, the security was tight there, and okay. there was this chemistry of misunderstanding between the police and the uh, residents, and it resulted in the firing of warning shots, which uh, uh, brought right. us where we are, where six, six people are currently have, receiving treatment. Unfortunate yes. that. Some good detail there. Chris, thank you so much. Christopher Malcolm is our North Savannah Savannah regional correspondent. Coming up next here on Ghana Tonight, the men have been separated from the boys in the just-ended new Petote Party Super Delegates Conference. But that wasn't without a few incidents causing the party to haul before the disciplinary committee some individuals, including flag bearer hopeful Kennedy Japong. But we have an exclusive with Francis Adai Nimo as well coming up right after this quick break. He's going to be joining us in the studio. He is one of two persons who pulled nine votes together. That's with Boachi Chamati Jakum. Now, there are three options the party is looking at, that either one of them will step down for the other or that they would come to a truce themselves or some sort of agreement to have one person step down. Earlier, there were reports that Boachi Jakum had stepped down. He says that's not true. So we'll be finding out from Francis Adainimo in the studio after this quick break. Stay with us. Gentlemen, we're going to demonstrate to you the superior properties of Flamingo paint as compared to other paint brands on the market. We take equal quantities of Flamingo paint and this ordinary paint. We then dilute them with water. And now, let the test begin. The gentleman on the left is going to apply the ordinary paint and the gentleman on my right will use the Flamingo Superior paint. As you can clearly see, Flamingo has the obvious better hiding. Furthermore, Flamingo has painted a much larger area. You know, one bucket of Flamingo paint is equal to several buckets of any other paint brand on the market. Flamingo paint is made with superior formulation to give superior durability, superior hiding, superior coverage. Flamingo paint, simply superior. When you have the extra bit of ambition in your heart, you also need extra bit of energy to come through. And for that, Rush Energy is the perfect boost to get over the line. Created in the USA and proudly made in Ghana. Thanks to the unique formula, you have the power of ginseng. The benefit of vitamins and all the energy of inositol, taurine and caffeine. Anytime you need to go beyond, Rush Energy will help you get there. Everybody knows Acrobato. And if you know Acrobato, it means you know M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. M Punch Homeopathy Clinic is my pillar. Let's hear what others are saying about M Punch Homeopathy Clinic. Who will be careful M Punch Wana? Yes, <laughs> 
a free bra would the end point what dance. I'm a choir. Me just say my name quite a person my name in and a magina sabema. Now many be fear for the one in a jarisa. You better reach it. A half secret. M point is my secret. M point from your party clinic. I'm free. Get ready to explore the taste of healthy living with Alpha Cracker from Mudbury. This amazing cracker is rich in milk, butter, and other essential nutrients that leaves you wanting more. It's thick and crunchy, affordable and appropriate for all ages. Alpha Cracker, the new king, is in town. Sporting disciplines matter on Warmer Plus. Uh. Warmer Plus, the most exciting hour on TV. So join the conversation and get updated. Get sports news, visit exciting places, and be in the know on Warmer Plus. Let's go, Diana. We're just getting started. We're just getting warmed up. Catch me, Yao, the Fusulabi. And me, Aniela Alute. Warm Up Plus, new season coming soon on TV3. Welcome back. This is Ghana Tonight. We're live on TV3 Ghana on Facebook, DSV Channel 279, all across the world on 3news.com. Now, uh, so over the weekend, the MPP's Super Delegates Congress to whittle the numbers of the presidential, that's a flag bearer hopefuls from down from 10 to 5. Well, guess what? It's just four who have gone through because the fifth position was a tie. And so, per the party's constitution and the arrangements that they have put in place for a situation like this, there would have to be another election to break the tie between Francis Adainimo and Boachicha Mante Jacum. Now, Francis Adainimo, one of the two, is with us in the studio tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, um, Alfred, for having me. Great. Just put a brief background to this man we have in, in the studio. This is not the first time he's gone at this dream of leading the flag, as the party as his flag bearer. Take a look at this. In 2014, now these were the persons, number of delegates, 115,000. Um, and then Francis Adainimo at the time polled 1,198. Remember that? Period as well, there was a special super delegates yeah, congress. Yes, that was the first, uh, the first test in, of it in the party. There are some who have raised concerns about it that it, it it's, it's, could be an unfair approach to reducing the numbers because then you are just selecting 961 out of over 220,000 delegates to determine who goes to the next stage. You, you well, Alfred, and uh, also to your viewers, um, the constitution was amended mm -hmm. in 2009 after the 2007 experience of having 17 aspirants. Mm -hmm. And then we went to the 2008 elections and then the party lost. Mm -hmm. Then in 2009, I mean, there was a proposal to have some amendments to uh, see if the number, if it goes beyond uh, five aspirants or mm -hmm. contestants and that is why we have that in our constitution Indeed. now and the first time the party uh, invoked that provision and applied it was in 2014. Mm -hmm. in 2014 there were seven contestants and i was one of them and that was the first experience of going through the special college election mm -hmm. In fact, in the Constitution, it is described as special, special college, college elections election. to shortlist the number to five. But now it has been termed to be super, super delegates. Delegate. So we'll, we'll it's just a it. question of terminology. Mm. So this is the second experience in the party. Mm. And I'm sure that 2014, 
2023, these two experiences may guide us going forward into the future. Whether the provision as it is now satisfies democratic principles. Mm. But what's your view? That, does this super delegation well, just satisfy democratic principles where you have 961 out of over 220,000 determining the, their dreams? You know, the, 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 there is a similar approach by the Conservative Party in UK. Mm. In the UK, Conservative Party in seeking or looking or in searching for the leadership of the UK Conservative Party, mm -hmm. there's a process. And they go through it from the 1922 Committee of Parliament of the Conservative Party. That's right. They will vote to shortlist their number. Then there will be a second round of voting mm -hmm. to shortlist their number before two persons will be presented to the general electorate of the Conservative Party. And let me give you this example for the purpose of our quick viewers. Yes. Quick one. When Boris Johnson resigned, in 2022, mm -hmm. the Conservative Party had the election which brought in Liz Truss. Precisely. Yes. The first round, Liz Truss uh, secured, I think, the fourth or fifth position. Mm -hmm. Then the second round of voting, she came, in. she came second to Rishi Sunak, who is now the, the Prime, Prime Minister. Minister. And then mm -hmm. in the general election, Liz Truss won, won. against uh, So Rishi you have Sunak. hope. Of so course, you are, you are mean, deriving <laughs> some hope from yes, from yes, yes, trust. Yes, of course. I, I mean, that is an experience which is there for us. Eh. And somebody can also argue that in our uh, jurisdiction, as far as the party is concerned, okay. we also have a precedent of what I happened see. in 2014. Now, so uh, let's fast forward to, to 2023, this year. Now, this super delegates Congress, you pulled nine votes. Nine. Yeah. Did, did, did that surprise you, or you think you did well? Well, I mean, it surprised me. I, I was hoping to secure more votes than what I got. But that is election. Mm. And so it's a question of having the, the belief of getting something, and you don't get it. I mean, right. uh, you can never predict uh, mm. the human being. And like so, you can't predict the delegates. Of course. I mean, they are human beings. Uh -huh. And I don't want, usually people say delegates, fear delegates. Fear delegates. Or, but they are human beings, so fear human beings. Uh, no, no. Not so, delegates. So you were saying you should fear the human, human beings. beings. Who are delegates? Yeah, I mean, you could also be a delegate of a political party. Assuming well, you are a member I, of a political I'm, party. I am not a delegate. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> I'm only saying to you. Well, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I mean, the whole thing is that. Who are the delegates? We human are human beings. beings. So you fear human beings? Of course, because human beings, there's an element of unpredictability. Mm. And so because of that, whatever you do, you allow a certain percentage of failure or betrayer. You cannot be 100% certain. So you feel betrayed? Well, I mean, if you were, you, in your estimation, you were looking for a certain number of votes and you didn't get it, I mean, one can describe it to be a betrayer. But that is why I'm saying that human beings are unpredictable. You and I, including mm. you, including me. Yeah. Together, we are all unpredictable. Today, the mind goes this way to take a certain decision. By tomorrow, there's a new consideration that mm. you could change your mind. And sometimes, I mean, in elections... Somebody is giving the ballot paper, and just at the screen of thumbprinting, his mind will change, and you thumbprint for somebody else. How do you explain that? Well, but what message did you go to these super delegates with? Personally, yes, I have articulated the message of new face for the party. New face, yes, new face for. Why the party. do you think the party needs a new face? Well, it's based, the justification is based on historical facts. Okay. Uh, between the NDC and the NPP mm -hmm. since 1993, after eight years of the party in, in government, the next general election, if the party picks somebody who has been part of the government, the party doesn't succeed. The first example is Professor Mills, the late mm -hmm. Professor Mills. Yes. He was a sitting vice president mm -hmm. to J.J. Rollins. He became NDC candidate, candidate. in 2000 election. Mm -hmm. NDC could not win. Mm -hmm. They could not break the eight. 
Right. Then in 2008, Nana Kufuado, no, Nana Kufuado, mm -hmm. President Kufuado now, was a foreign minister in Jay Kufuado's administration. Yes. He became MPP's candidate, okay. pre, uh, presidential candidate. MPP could also not break the eight. Uh, I see. And then 2016, uh -huh. after eight years of NDC in government, with John Mahama as a sitting president and a presidential candidate for NDC, he could also not break the eight. So you are looking at the eight, eight year cycle, yes. not the fact that somebody who has been part of the government no. Won't so, go ahead to win a subsequent election. Yes, so I mean, it tells you that after the eight years, perhaps there's what we call official fatigue. Okay. And so people are, may be looking for a new ways of doing So for you, anybody who is contesting this flag bearership, who is a member of this administration, doesn't fit into your definition of the new face. Yes, yeah, not... I mean, of course, that is my message to the party, and I have been very categorical. Not only that, there are other characteristics that I have outlined. Okay, so not the, just not being part of this government, but there are other characteristics which should go in considering who is the most suitable person. Because at the end of the day, we are looking for the most suitable person who will lead the party for the party to go beyond eight years in government, mm -hmm. achieve 12 years, yes. and achieve 16 to years. To break the eight. Absolutely. And you are saying that based on your historical analysis. Yes. If, for instance, the party puts up Dr. Bamiya, based on your historical analysis, yes. you will lose well, 2024. I mean, it follows. It follows. And I have given all the critical, I mean, the classic examples. And whether I'm wrong, you, you should be able to tell me, but mm -hmm. I don't think the viewers will know that what I'm saying is the fact. The fact is that it happened in 2000. It With happened in 2000. Yes, it happened in 2008. With Kufuado, it happened in 2016. With your mama? Yes. And so you're saying that in 2024, if Dr. Bamiya, for instance, well, for the, for the mean, sake of this argument, yes. is put up, history it, it will not be yes. on his side. Yes, He's history may be repeated. History may be repeated. And I mean, I am, I am just giving uh, an input on what has happened so far, just mm -hmm. to draw the attention of the MPP as a party or delegates to this fact. So why don't we go for a different direction and then see to it that we, we can overcome the situation and set a political record in Ghana mm. as a first tradition to be in government for 12 years or 16 years. But that's why Dr. Bamiya has chosen that and he says it is possible. <laughs> well, I mean, we need to compare that I and see. contrast with the historical facts. Well, but you see, if the evidence of your vote, nine votes, is anything to go by, is that to say that this message didn't resonate well no, with no. the voter profile of the I mean, super delegates? That's why I gave you an example of Liz Truss, mm -hmm. how she became the UK Prime Minister. But you had nine votes. Wait a moment. In the same, similarly, Liz Truss, in the first vote of the 1922 committee in the UK Parliament of the Conservative Party, I think she came about fourth or fifth. Uh -huh. you, okay? Yes. And then there was a second round of votes. And she went to the second position before the third round, which had the, all the delegates of the Conservative Party voting. To okay. be honest, I, yeah. I wish it was, it was really that um, straightforward and, and very simple let, let me, let to do me, that analogy with, yeah. the, with what happens well, in the UK. Let but me, you know let that me, the nuances are different. Right? Well, and, I agree. And, and, and I agree. you cannot say cast in stone. What happened in the UK will no. happen here. Well, Plenty I mean, things happen. Democracy. <laughs> that, that, but we, it's all democracy. Indeed. And we, we learn. Okay? We learn. Right. Alfred, mm -hmm. we learn. Okay. And we, we compare with other democracies what has happened in other democracies. I mean, we need to look for examples where such, such situations have also occurred. Yes, this is a a special electoral college voting mm -hmm. made up of about 950 or 960 delegates. Mm -hmm. If you compute in percentage terms with the total number of delegates expected to cast their vote to elect the flag bearer November 4th, that is insignificant. Though, though the composition of the special college okay. is seen to be the top echelon of the party. True. 
they seem to be mm -hmm. the top echelon of the party. That's the yes. president. And, and this exercise that happened on Saturday, the objective is not to elect the flag bearer, but to cut neither, down the numbers. Neither to predict, neither to predict who becomes the flag bearer. The objective okay. is shortlisting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just to go for an interview and there's a mechanism of reducing the numbers. Okay, but and then see, after that, you are giving out to the general uh, um, delegates. You have a lot of faith in, in Lestras and what happened to her, but mm -hmm. you are now tied with Boachi Chamanteja for that fifth position. All of both of you had nine. Mm -hmm. There was earlier news of he stepping down for you. He's come out to say it's not true. He's mm -hmm. going into the contest on Saturday with you. Are, are you stepping down for him? <laughs> not at all. Why? I mean, but the rules are there. Mm -hmm. We are following the rules. Okay. Mm -hmm. We adopted the rules approved by the National Council of the Party. And then the rules said, or the guidelines said that should there be a tie for the fifth position, then there shall be a runoff to determine mm -hmm. who occupies that fifth position. Well, if the lawyers can also give an interpretation that if there is a tie, then one can describe it as 5A, 5B. Mm. So, you, the, so the two of you would be made to ground. Well, they, so you have six I people am just, going into November 4th. I am just as a layman. I'm not a lawyer. Okay. I'm not a, I don't sit at the bench. Indeed. But I'm just giving a, a layman's interpretation that if that. So this tie, is the provision in, in, the, in the issues of the Electoral College that's per your party's guidelines. Yeah. That in the event of two, three, or four mm -hmm. contestants sharing the total results yeah, with the remaining contestant not, not yeah. obtaining any vote, yeah. there will be a runoff, yeah. which is going to happen mm -hmm. as uh, Professor okay. Reverend Aaron Michael yeah, Quay on indicated. September. On, that's this, this coming Saturday. I'm there are many who argue that, look, I mean, nothing dramatic would, would happen between, for instance, now and November 4, if any of the two, that's you and Bache um, Jaco, even go through. What is, the, what is the basis the, of that argument? Because so you have 10 weeks, you've got nine votes. Mm -hmm. Would you be able to? What, what are but you going to do, do, do differently you know what, to, do you, to, to pull through, to come and, and put up any, any surprise? Well, Alfred, do, do you know what, I mean, others may, may be doing behind the scenes? In, in, in canvassing for votes within the over 200,000 delegates. Mm -hmm. And the requirement is that for the over 200,000 delegates, let's say close to 210,000 delegates mm -hmm. who elect the flag bearer, the requirement is that you need to secure a threshold of 50% plus one. True. So if there are 200,000, then one needs to, the 100,000 plus one mm -hmm. vote to win to become the flag bearer of the party. Mm -hmm. So from now to the time, you don't know what engagement others are also doing within. There okay. are 275 constituencies okay. in accordance with the Electoral Commission, but there are 206, 276 constituencies in accordance with the party's uh, How many of them have you visited? So I've visited quite a number of them, but I won't disclose to okay. you this program. <laughs> Great, it's your strategy. Yes. But there were some regrettable incidents on Saturday, which some of your colleagues have raised concerns about. Did you also have concerns about what are some issues on no, Saturday? No, honestly, no. I mean, I, I was not at any polling station. Did there you were, have agents there, there? Yes, there were 17, there were 17 polling centers, uh -huh. and I had agents in all the 17 polling centers. And so you don't have any showdown to show anybody? Well, until I got to know that in Ashanti region, something happened where the, um, the regional youth organizer, after thumb printing the ballot, I mean, showed it somehow publicly, and that was rejected. Mm -hmm. Because in the guidelines, we you stated if you do that. that if you do that, it's an offense, You're, you forfeit your ballot, and you cannot be given a fresh ballot paper. Well, the, some of the uh, agents of Kennedy Japan, one of the four who have gone through, shared their ordeal on what happened on Saturday. Take a look. Plain area, and I said, any question, yeah, enclosed. 
Voting was initially planned for an open area, but took place in an enclosed space, the Nalergu SHS dining hall. Despite 28 people expected to vote, the crowd inside the hall exceeded the capacity. I came out and raised concerns and was subsequently attacked by the crowd of men. After being pushed to the ground, I managed to get up and flee. Because I raising alarm no insider. It could be anything. Oh, so that's Homo Said, who was um, an agent for Kennedy okay. Japan as well. And then that other person who sustained some injuries, called mm. the, the pictures went viral, okay. with one eye almost close to you, you saw that. No, mm. uh, no. Mm. And honestly, I need to be honest with mm. viewers. I haven't seen what okay. you're talking about. But of course, I got a report also from my agent, Your agent. in the Northeast region. Okay. That the youth organizer for the region mm -hmm. of the party also after casting or tampering his ballot before putting it in the box showed it, showed it. was and that there rejected was, and there was a reaction to yes i that is what i cannot confirm you know and i'm sure maybe it's out of that that ensued the um the kind of misunderstanding that occurred over there I see. And well, the party's election com committee has also been talking. Alexander Penyo Marking is a member of the committee. Take a look. Any aspirant, any agent who would make it his own bona fide of waging war against the party will be sanctioned. By saying <laughs> war against the party, I specifically mean that no member should make it a point to attack any member, any needed member, merely for disagreeing with a particular matter. We are inviting certain personalities to appear before us for engagement. We want to hear them. We have heard of certain allegations in the media. For the sake of the party's well-being, for the sake of the unity of the party, we have taken it upon ourselves to again say that all such individuals are to appear before us. Strategy going into Saturday. Now that we know that none of you stepping down. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a contest on Saturday. Mm -hmm. What's the strategy going forward? Well, the strategy is to get a vote. To get the vote? Yes. More, more than nine votes? <laughs> well, it's the same electoral college size mm -hmm. <laughs> that is expected to and You are vote. taking the same message to them, that the party needs a new face. Well, I don't know how you are interpreting the outcome mm -hmm. of Saturday's uh, election. And I've told you, the objective of what we did, the exercise we carried out last Saturday, was for a shortlisting purpose. Okay. Not for the election of a flag bearer, not for the prediction of, of who what becomes a flag bearer. And that is why we only have a number less than 1,000 1, being Indeed. delegates True. for this special college to vote. Okay. Beyond that, then one needs to go to the, once you have become part of the first five, you now have to go to the large uh, delegate size, which covers all the 276 constituencies in accordance with the MPP structure. That is where the votes are, and that is where we are going to harvest. Going so to don't harvest limit my message to, to the special, special college election delegates. Your target is November 4. Absolutely. Because that is the ultimate. But you get, you get to the ultimate after crossing the first hurdle. And this is the first hurdle. So you're confident you're going to go through on Saturday to be well, the one, the number I'm, five. <laughs> Alfred, why not? Okay. I mean, I, I, I went into the game or I went into this contest with the mindset of winning. I'm not in the contest just to showcase myself. Absolutely. And I should be taken for that. And I mean it. He means it. Yes. And the former member of parliament now wants to lead the party as, and the NPP as its flag bearer 
He says the party needs a new face and that he represents that new face. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Alfred, also for having me and good night. Good night to you too. Mm -hmm. uh, Francis Adainimo, um, together with Boache Jaco, Saturday they have a contest. On behalf of the rest of the team, thank you so much for joining us here on Ghana Tonight. Join us same time tomorrow. I am Alfred Akansi. Have a good night. Ghana Tonight is brought to you by Flamingo Paint. Superior durability. Superior hiding. Superior coverage. Simply superior. This program is rated PG. It contains scenes of brief nudity, mild violence, and strong language. Parental guidance is advised. It's brought to you by MTN Gluta White. Until I know what you've decided. Okay, look, I was hoping we forget about our little ultimatum. Well, that little ultimatum is the only reason that I'm here. So choose. Dim or your best. Zalega, you're not gonna make me choose. Why does it sound like you've already made a choice? I'm not choosing. <clears throat> I'm becoming of a married couple fornicating in their pajamas. Do you want me to get dressed first, then? Kilo Nishie, your father may tolerate your sarcasm, but I will not. You will watch how you speak to me, young lady. Kilo Nishie. Sorry, sir. We apologize. What happened to you? What happened to that sweet Ayo that I remember? She grew up. Nishie Joy. Mm. This man and my mother would never steal from a charity, especially not one named after a dead child. I mean, that must be a mistake. Oh, only time will tell. Oh, one will be done. Allows for a public suspension. Not to bring the party's name into further disrepute. I'm telling you, you can't do that. Yes, I can. You know what? It's fine. Let him do the investigation. You're innocent, right? Huh? Who and Jay trying to maneuver his way back in? I just think it's cute. Was he, he pretended to be someone else. Was he No? We as if I was a teeny millicent. This is classic psycho behavior. Oh, but you lie and keep secrets from me as well. So obviously, says I didn't like. Wow. Hmm. I thought you forgave me for that. I thought so too. But maybe not. You know, my friend, I'm not gonna keep apologizing, okay? We has my intentions all good. Really? Yeah. If you were really sorry, Millicent, and a real friend, you would be begging me with him to live from that weirdo. It's one thing after another, no Simon. I get called nomad. Everyone deserves love, even psychos. Stop, stop, stop. What I screw up even more. I'll handle it. Really? Mm-hmm.